as I, they introduced me, I'm a dietitian nutritionist and I studied in Spain. And I've been in the Bay Area for three years now. Um, so we all know that fasting is a pillar of Islam and for some of us it's a test, right? And we can't deny the fact that one of the joys of our days when we break our fast. And it is narrated by Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, there are two joys for the fasting person. The joy when he breaks his fast and the joy when he meets his Lord. So we're not alone. We do experience joy. We all know that Allah is the provider. He's the one that's going to suffice our hunger and our thirst. And as Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, the Messenger of Allah, bless, uh, bless him and give him peace, used to supplicate, I seek refuge in you from hunger. Surely it is the worst companion. I seek refuge in you from treachery. Surely it's a, it's a bad inner trait. In another hadith, Abu Said al-Qudri said, Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to say, when we had finished his meal, praise be to Allah who has fed us and quenched our thirst and he has made us Muslims. So we can't deny that Allah is the ultimate provider. However, if we take care of our bodily human needs, we're going to be able to forget about it, forget about our bodies and worship better. So I asked around, and because I was curious what would like people to know about nutrition, and I decided to structure the, um, the talk in three main points, hydration, society, and energy. I asked around, and I was thinking, like, what do I say? What do I speak? We, we don't eat during Ramadan, don't we? Says no iftar. <laughs> so I said, okay, what is the most important thing that um, we need to know? We need to know about hydration, and this is what we're gonna uh, start with. Hydration, we all know it's uh, essential for a body to work properly. It, uh, one of its functions is. Uh, regulating body temperature, transporting nutrients, and eliminating waste, amongst others. Um, but why do we get dehydrated during Ramadan, right? The first thing that most people is going to think about is, of course, we're not drinking water. Uh, I would like to know uh, how many of you here do get headaches during Ramadan. Okay, okay, me included. <laughs> um, and yes, of course, the insufficient water intake is going to contribute to that. And the withdrawal of caffeine, it's also contributed to this. However, I'd like to introduce a different, uh, a new concept to this matter. And is the excess of high sodium foods. And as you see what I wrote in, in the board, sodium is one of the components of salt. So I don't want you to be afraid of salt. Salt is good, but in moderation. However, when we're talking about the excess of sodium foods, we're thinking about this. We're thinking about burgers, we're thinking about snacks, we're thinking about cane foods, we're thinking about even like sugary drinks, we're thinking about um, juices, uh, dairies, pizzas, and we all, during Ramadan, we go out for iftar, we get invited to iftar, we, we have been fasting all day, so yes, we deserve that burger. So we do have uh, an excess of sodium in our diets. What does really sodium do, and how it contributes to the headaches during uh, our fasting? Sodium is a molecule, part of uh, salt, that helps in the transmission of, um, it's a neurotransmitter, so it helps for the, with the muscles and the neurons 
to work properly. What the, what the body does is when there's too much sodium in our bodies, it retains water. This way, we are feeling dehydrated, but bloated. So the excess of sodium is contributing to dehydration, plus water and other causes, and it's contributing to the headaches. Uh, how can we support hydration? We can break our fast with water, we can include whole watery foods like fruits and vegetables. Coconut drink, it's a, it's a very good source of, it's a very good fluid, a very good drink to, to have in, in general because it contains the right amount of minerals and nutrients that we need to support that balance of sodium and electrolytes. Don't overdo caffeine. And obviously, 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 please avoid junk food as much as you can. I want to um, address the caffeine issue and usually what happens and why this is contributing to dehydrate our bodies, it's not because of the caffeine itself, it's because we are substituting the intake of water for these caffeine beverages. So it's okay if you want to include this caffeinated beverage, they're not going to dehydrate it dehydrate, they're not going to dehydrate you unless obviously you're doing it in excess, but remember to include with them some water. Oh, no. Next point um, is satiety. And before you tell me okay, we're, we're fasting, we can't be satisfied during the, the day, we're going to feel hungry. Yes, 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 we are going to feel hungry during the day. I can't give you a magic pill to tell you, oh, at 3 p.m., you can do this. No, no, that's, that's not going to happen. However, what I can tell you is what to do in order to not feel hungry, hungry two hours after having your suhoor or having your iftar. Um... So why do we get hungry so fast? Uh, probably it's because you're having your meals are high in simple carbohydrates. Probably this meal is lacking, is lacking sufficient protein or fat. Probably you don't have enough fiber. You might be dehydrated or you're not eating enough. Uh, so with the simple carbohydrates, I'm going to show you next slide. And as you can see in this slide, different macronutrients, which are the main components of food. Uh, when we're talking about carbs, we're talking about potatoes. We're talking about rice. We're talking about bread. These are the main ones. There's more, but the more familiar ones. When we eat these simple carbohydrates, our glucose levels go up, 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 up. And the higher these levels go, the bigger the drop is going to be. So the bigger the drop is, the faster you're going to feel hung hunger. Why, um, as you can see, proteins is less and fats is less. So if we think about, okay, why am I feeling so hungry? Did I just have a, a croissant for so hot? or maybe I just did have a, a croissant for Suhoor. Did I just have three days for Suhoor? Oh, yes, I just had three days for Suhoor. So I'm not telling you you can't have these things. I'm telling you, okay, think wisely. Use, combine your, um, combine your carbs with, if you're eating a croissant, fill it with salmon, fill it, fill it with cream cheese and have eggs on the side. Something like that. Um, how can we maintain this society and avoiding those gluco glucose spikes? That is the answer to your hunger. It's including complex carbohydrates. Uh, this means mainly whole foods, like whole carbohydrates. You can, you can think of brown rice. You can think of uh, potato. You can think of... Um, 
carrots, you can think of beetroots, you can think of all these complex carbohydrates that are going to contribute to the slower release of the glucose in your body. And therefore, that big spike that we just saw in this slide is going to be slower. It's going to be lower and the, the hunger is going to be less. Consider, this is a little bit difficult, but if you live alone or you have the option to do this, it's a very good technique. Imagine you're having pasta uh, for dinner or for iftar. Why don't you, instead of eating first the pasta and then a salad, you first include the salad and then you eat the, car, the, the pasta? This is going to make uh, a decrease on the spike of glucose and therefore you're gonna, you, you, the glucose is going to be released in your body slower and your spike is going to be lower and you're going to feel less hungry after eating this. You have to stay hydrated. Sometimes we confuse hunger with the need of water. So just make sure you're drinking your water and you're not, um, you, your, your body is going to understand that it's full and it's not dehydrating. And pay attention to your hunger and, uh, and fullness cues. This is very important because during Ramadan, we're out, we're talking, we're engaging, we forget about our stomachs and then we go home. Oh, I can't even pray that away. I need, to, I need to sleep. So please be aware and pay a little bit of attention to your hunger and fullness cues. Or even in the morning, for Suhoor, some people are just like so tired, they can't even wake up for, for uh, Suhoor. And this is going to lead after into overcompensating in iftars for that lack of energy that uh, we didn't take during Suhoor. Okay, last, energy. Some people came to me and told me, um, I feel so, 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 so tired at the end of Ramadan. I, I can barely keep up with the, all this stuff that I have to do. Why do we feel so tired during fasting? First of all, our blood sugar goes low. And this is a process that's going to happen. Our body has to adjust to it. We can't do too much about it, but if we are remembering what I said before, this is going to be easier for your body to do uh, in order to adjust better. So this uh, low blood sugar, because our bodies, we're not feeding our bodies with food, our bodies have to take from what it's stored in the muscles and in the liver. And then it's going to be using the fats. And this process takes longer than if you just eat. So adjusting to this to get energy, it's a little bit slower and therefore our sugar levels are going to be lower. Just keep that in mind that it's a transition and if you support this, it's going to be easier to adjust to Ramadan. Dehydration, it's also um, why we are not having all that energy and we're feeling DC and we're feeling um, a little bit sluggish. So just this is why I put it the first because it, it role, it, it plays a big role in energy and in society. Uh, changes in hormonal levels. This one is very interesting. During, uh, when we fast, naturally our bodies release more cortisol. Cortisol is the hormone that we relate, that we call the stress hormone. And this stress hormone um, is going to make us a little bit anxious and a, and a little bit mm, overwhelmed. Uh, and also adrenaline, we also release more adrenaline. And adrenaline is telling our bodies, ah, we have to be alert. There's something happening. There's something changing in, the, in, in our bodies. These, for, um, for our bodies to be in this alert mode, it requires a lot of energy. But as, as we said, we have low blood sugar levels. So our body is already consuming a lot of our storage energy plus the adrenaline coming in to play a role, we're going to feel depleted. We're going to feel like we have no energy. Just staying calm, 
resting. I'll, I'll tell you what to do in the next slide. And this one is very important, the lack of nutrients. Uh, as I said, we go out, we're invited for iftar. We tend to eat what we call it the empty calories, right? Empty calories, no nutrients. If we are not feeding ourselves well, by the end of Ramadan, we have no energy. There's nothing stored in our bodies to give us more energy. We have empty calories. They don't have nutrients to fill our muscles and to fill, fill our cells. So no nutrients, no energy. How can we increase our energy levels during Ramadan? This is, this is um, I like this one, is to time your carbohydrates. Either if, if I'll, I'll give two examples. Um, if you're a morning person, a person who has a very long day ahead, um, and you're probably trying to get in more sleep at night, eat your carbohydrates in the morning. This is going to help you release all, to, to use all that energy during the day. It, um, so you eat it in the morning, and during the day, you're not using the stored uh, energy that you have in your body, but you are using this, the energy that you are getting from the food that you just ate. If, on the other hand, you're a person who has the luxury to take naps during the day, um, who likes to stay up all night, or who, or who likes to be more a night person, eat your carbs at night because this is going to give you more energy to perform worship better, for example. Um, eat nutrient-dense foods. As I said, please avoid empty calories. It's not going to help you with your energy. Avoid fast food. Again, we, we, all, we already learned that it's not good for dehydration. Um, eat whole rather than process. This, as an example, could be instead of doing a smoothie, I prefer you to eat the whole apple and the nuts because your body is going to uh, release some hormones that is going to tell the body, okay, I'm full. I'm, I, I have the energy. If we eat processed foods uh, or mixed foods or juices or smoothies, the glucose spike is going to go up and then we're going to crash. So if you eat whole rather than processed, it's going to help with your energy. Take a nap if you can, if you have the luxury uh, included. This is also going to help with energy. Do some light to moderate exercise. Uh, if you can, go for a walk. It's going to restore your energy levels. It's going to help with your hunger cues. Um, if you can do it before iftar, that's great, because then you can replenish all that that you've lost. Um, if not, just do it, do it when you can. And don't overeat, because you're going to be... Um, you're going to be feeling very sluggish. With this said, what are the takeaways for this talk? Um, remember to decrease sodium-rich foods and don't overdo the don'ts. Don't over-drink caffeine. Um, even don't overdo water. I didn't mention that, but don't overdo water. When you drink too much water, your sodium levels are too low. So your body, in order to restore the normal levels of sodium, is going to excrete all the water that it can to maintain that concentration in the body. And this is uh, dehydrating you as well. So don't overdo. Either it's drinking or not drinking. Um, careful with the glucose spikes and eat your proteins. I need to say that. Um, eat net nutrient-dense food and use carbohydrates wisely. And with this, um, please eat seasonal because seasonal foods generally contain all the nutrients uh, and minerals that your body needs in this time of the year. If you can't go to the farmer's market, you can look up uh, in this page um, what are the seasonal foods and then you can buy it in the supermarket. Ideas. Okay, I told you all of this, but this is what you really want. What should I eat for Zuhud? What should I eat for Iftar? Please tell me so I don't have to think. Um, this is just suggestions. Uh, every culture has different. Every person has different needs. So this is not a one-size-fits-all. 
eggs with avocado on toast for suhu, chickpea patties, whole food yogurts, uh, scrambled eggs, bean and eggs, shakshuka. Okay, there's a lot of eggs here, but you can eat meat, you can eat, yeah, you can eat even lentil soup if you want in the morning, whatever. Um, you can even eat the leftovers from iftar if you want in the morning. Just having in, in consideration the glucose spikes and um, whole rather than anything that is processed. For iftar, roasted chicken, lentil soup, sauté shrimp. We tend to forget about fish during Ramadan, in general. So please include a little bit of fish because it has uh, a lot of uh, calcium. Miso soup, uh, fish, fish chowder, seasonal salad, rice and lentil, um, you name it, but low in sodium. <laughs> and usually uh, when we go out, restaurants and supermarkets and takes away, they tend to have very, very, very high concentration of sodium in their foods. So if you have any questions, I have a little bit of time left. Um, and uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing to stay here during this time. And it was a pleasure sharing uh, this space in community. Thank you. Do we have time yeah, for q &A? we have about eight minutes. So please, if you have questions for Sister, yes, go ahead. I'll let you pick Oh, no. Okay, sure. Go ahead, brother. Uh, what are your thoughts on slow-release caffeine pills? Slow-release caffeine pills. Hmm. So you take it... Uh, you're, okay, you... It's okay. It's fine. Uh, as long as the concentration of caffeine is not too high, it wouldn't pass... It wouldn't uh, be more than four cups, because four cups is the maximum that we should be taking... Uh, throughout the day and just if you time it accordingly to your needs then I would say it's it's fine yeah don't overdo it just do it when you need it thank you okay well, good question um Usually the fried foods that you consume ha are high in sodium, so. <laughs> uh, sorry? Um, if you have to choose, choose whatever you're gonna enjoy the most. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah um, regular water doesn't contain certain electrolytes that coconut water does and certain minerals that water does. And especially because we have a very limited time to consume water and to eat uh, certain foods, we might want to include that in our fluid consumptions. Uh, instead of water, or not instead of water, uh, water sorry, uh, as a part of our water consumption. Yes, okay, as our sister said, um, you're just adding minerals to your water so I would that's that's a, a little bit of a hard question because this is a very personal um, recommendation so I wouldn't say everyone needs this probably not everyone and the general population we don't need it in general we don't need it this is specifically I would say People who do a lot of sports, who get, tend to re, like uh, sweat a lot, those are the people who are going to need this replenish of minerals because the concentration in these beverage are quite high. Um, so it depends on your diet. I would say yes or no. So yeah, it depends. It, this is a question that I have to say it depends. Protein or caffeine? Yes. Um, so it's going to depend most on your schedule. 
if you need that caffeine during the day, drink it in the morning. If you need that caffeine during the night, include it at night. Um, because it's going to depend on how you're going to use that caffeine and how you're going to use that protein. Protein, I would say include it. You can include it in suhoor and uh, at the iftar because it's going to help you stay, uh, s uh, keep the sati satiety during the day. And at night, it's going to make you feel like replenish all that that you weren't consuming during the day. Sure. Yes. Do, you, do you want us to eat eggs? Is it good? Yes, eggs is good. And this is a controversial uh, question. And um, it doesn't, unless you have a genetic problem with uh, cholesterol, it doesn't contribute to your inner cholesterol. External cholesterol does not influence your inner cholesterol production. It is a controversial topic, I know. Um, but eat your eggs and you can eat uh, as much as like two or three eggs a day. It is a controversial question, I know, and if there's a doctors here, maybe they don't, they don't agree with me, but um, yeah. If you, if you have good or bad cholesterol, you can eat eggs. It's only if you have a modification in your genes. It's a, it's a very specific thing that you have to have not to eat your eggs. If you tell me what is your opinion, I would say eat your eggs every day. No matter if you have high cholesterol or low cholesterol. Yeah. Thank you. Oh yes, there's going to be a huge difference. Um, our bodies, when we're fasting, they go into a survival mode. They do. They go into survival mode, and what they do is that they they're going to take whatever you give them when you eat. So it's like, okay, I'm waiting for you to eat to store whatever you're giving me. So if you drink and you eat healthy. Um, on your iftar, you're going to store that goodness to your body uh, instead if you're, if you're eating like empty calories or you're choosing like less healthy food, you're going to be uh, storing those fats and those sugars more than if you eat healthy. So, I don't know if this answered your question. So, okay. so, 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 like everyone. so we're almost at time. We'll take one last question. And then just uh, FY, Maghrib uh, is at 6.15. Uh, after Maghrib, we will continue with our third part uh, with Brother Mahdi. So please don't leave after Maghrib. Please come back uh, right here, and we will co uh, complete our third part. So one, one last question. Does someone is there one last question? Yes, Brother. Um, you're, you're already limited on time. <laughs> you're, if you're eating three meals throughout the day, you're most likely going to push those calories into suhoor and iftar. Or you're probably going to do suhoor, iftar, and after, like, a, after dinner, something like that. You can have, like, a small iftar and then a big dinner. And that way you're just... No, I would just say, um, no, I, I would, I would recommend you, you at least take something for suhoor because it's going to help you not overeat, uh, during iftar because your body is going to tell you, oh, you, get, you were giving me this amount of energy and now you're taking it from me. I want it. So you're going to eat it. Uh, all at once, and then you're going to feel so tired, you're not going to be able to move. So I would suggest 
space it and eat at least two meals so you don't you don't encounter yourself with um, that sluggishness of overeating. <laughs>